Good morning, beloved. Peace be with you. Today on our first reading from the, the book of the prophet Daniel, we have another one of Daniel's visions, and it's very similar to a, a, that dream he interpreted with Nebuchadnezzar and the big statue and the four parts, basically these four kingdoms being set up. In this vision today, we see the short interpretation is he's describing or is seeing the, the four kingdoms that will come before the, the whole Maccabean revolt and before Jesus comes, uh, and then uh, basically, <clears throat> so you can look at and see, um, I think it's basically Babylon, Persia, Greece, and then Rome, and then Jesus, who is um, the one like a son of man, yeah, coming. And uh, of course, when Daniel sees him coming, he, Daniel's seeing from heaven's per- perspective. So Jesus coming on the clouds of he- to, he- to heaven means he's ascending from earth, right? So you got the disciples' vision as they're watching him go, and Daniel's vision as he's watching him come. <laughs> you know, so you have those two sides of that ascension uh, vision. And then, basically, these courts convene. This judgment is happening. So we know it's by the, 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 um, the death and resurrection and ascension of Jesus that the powers of, of evil are destroyed. Sin is destroyed. Many consequences of sin get destroyed. Death is conquered in the resurrection. And so we're seeing basically those things being judged and, the, and these, these evil uh, spirits or evil beasts be, behind those things being judged. So that's what we're kind of seeing. And of course, God's kingdom is what remains forever because God's kingdom is not this physical earthly kingdom, but it's a kingdom in our hearts. And this is all being shown to us in Daniel's vision with this apocalyptic literature. And so he's, it sounds kind of crazy at times. And it's not meant to be this like literal historical account, step by step by step, year by year by year, uh, like, like we try to write history today, but it's very poetic and very kind of roundabout, but using the same apocalyptic symbols. So if you're familiar with apocalyptic symbols, you can like pick out some of that interpretation. When I talk about beasts, beasts are always uh, um, a government or a kingdom. And usually when there's, if there's a beast with multiple heads, sometimes that means there's a conglomeration of governments coming together or kingdoms working together. Um, When when the beast has a a head and the head has a horn, the horn is a king or like we would call today a president, the leader of that government. And so when you have this beast with the different horns, the 10 horns just means like 10 different kings, you know, it's one after another after another. So this is their way of showing history generation after generation or ruler after ruler after ruler. And at the end, we see all of those get, get basically destroyed by, by, by the ancient one and the one like the son of man. Now in their days, they don't, you know, they're, they're thinking of this kind of messianic figure. This is why the Jews think so, so, um, about physical, a physical Messiah and a physical kingdom because they're, they're waiting for this savior figure to destroy these four physical kingdoms or these kingdoms um, to free them from this physical oppression. <clears throat> and so a lot of times we say, why don't the Jews get it? You know, why don't they get Jesus? You know, well, because even when Jesus died and rose from the dead, nothing physically changed. You know, those physical kingdoms remained and those rulers remained. But what changed is it, we begin to see that we talked about last week and the difference between the kingdoms in this world and the kingdom of God, where the kingdom of God remains because its structure is set up in our hearts and is spread from one heart to, from one heart to another heart. That's why Jesus said later on in the Gospels, like, so the kingdom of God is within you. <clears throat> another time he said, the kingdom of God is among you. So the kingdom of God is within each one of us, and when each one of us gather together, now the kingdom of God that's within us is among us. But it's never never set up as a physical kingdom, a physical place. Every physical place is really meant to be like an artwork that points us to this, this invisible reality. So this building is meant to point us to that, that, that the kingdom of God is among us who gather together. You know, the Vatican and Rome and all that stuff. It's just physical signs and, and symbols pointing us. It's supposed to be like this artwork that points us to the deeper reality. 
It's never meant to be like, oh, God's kingdom is going to be set up, you know. Is it going to be in Rome or in Constantinople, you know? No, none of those. <laughs> those are all just signs and symbols. God's not going to come and actually set up a physical throne and sit there, and we all come in and worship him like an earthly king. That's not going to happen. But that's when we see our, our church or just people of God, that's when we get off track. We can look at our history and see any time we have tried to shape the kingdom of God into a physical kingdom of the, like the world, that's where we've got off track. And we can see that ebb and flow in our history. <clears throat> the other place we can kind of get confused is when we read apocalyptic literature. Here we start, we can tend to think uh, end of the world stuff, you know, the end of all time stuff. And especially when we see crazy things happening in the world or oppression happening in the world, or just around us, and we can, oh, the, uh, Jesus is near, the end of time is coming, the end of time. And, uh, and most of the time, no, the apocalyptic, apocalyptic literature is not always describing the end of time, but uh, the end of an age. So the end of time as we know it. The end, so the end of governmental structures as we know it. And, you know, you can just think about how things change like that, um, throughout our history. There's a ton of that change. Just think of even our own just history here in, um, in North America, how North America came to be what it is right now, 50 United States. <laughs> it was not always 50 United States, right? And it's not always going to be 50 United States. At some point in time, this will change too. This government structure, these United States will also change into something else. Just like all those kingdoms in the past and these four kingdoms changed. They're not kingdoms anymore with kings. That whole government structure changed. So this will change too at some point. And that doesn't mean it's the end of the whole world, the end of time, but it will be the end of the world as we know it as it shifts to whatever the next thing is. What remains through all of that is the kingdom of God within us whose governmental structure never changes but keeps us steady through all those changes. That's why we cling to him. Uh, and that's why we, we can continue the mission and presence of Jesus Christ the same way, bringing people into relationship with God one heart at a time, one blessing at a time, one thank you at a time. And this kingdom remains and keeps going. And, and that's, why, that's why we can truly say nothing can stop the kingdom of God because it doesn't matter what government structure is happening, what ruler is out there, how much oppression we're under or not, if we're here in the parish or in the prison. <laughs> because the kingdom of God is just one heart at a time. The only thing, they, they would have to separate every single person in the world and put everybody in solitary confinement so that you couldn't interact with each other. And then probably God would just do bilocation and stuff or something, you know. <laughs> like he's going to get his kingdom spread, you know. And, and, and so that is, that is the good news. So, Father, we just thank you for the, the, just the truth of, and good news of salvation and your kingdom, which is established in the hearts of all believers. And we just pray that you would truly take your throne in each one of our hearts today in a fresh new way and just be, be our king our King, our Messiah, our Savior, uh, our Father, our friend. Uh, be the one that just truly rules our life and, 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 and in such a way that leads us to, to the freedom that you have created us to, to have. We pray these things together in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us.